Welcome to Chris Park in Shooting Sports. Today we've got the full review on the Element Optics Nexus Gen 2 scope. Now this is a first focal plane scope. Uh, it's got mil radian reticles, mil radian turrets. You can also have it in MOA um, reticle and MOA turrets if you want. But it's quite unusual because it's a 4 to 25 um, magnification scope, which is a 6.25 times zoom ratio. Most scopes are sort of round numbers like threes, fours, fives, or sixes, even sevens, eight sometimes. But generally, they're usually sort of arbitrarily a, a, a random fixed number rather than a decimal number. We get a nice wide field of view at four times magnification and lots of detail at 25 times. Being first focal plane, of course, the APR 2D reticle stays in perfect proportion with the image and also the clicks on the turrets every time you change magnification. So let's look at some more of the details. It's a 50 millimeter objective lens, lets quite a lot of light in, and we get a 30 millimeter tube. So it's not an oversized scope. It's actually still reasonably compact and not too bulbous. So you can fit it on most rifles. Parallax control on the left side actually goes from 10 meters to infinity. So it's still suitable for air rifles in use at short distance. The clicks are very tactile. This is the milliradian version, and there are 100 clicks per turn, which is 10 milliradians. Each click is 0.1 milliradians, which is 10 millimeters at 100 meters. And overall travel of the scope is 29 milliradians vertically and 11.6 horizontally. It is also available in minutes of angle, which equates to 100 minutes of angle vertically and 40 minutes of angle horizontally. The clicks on that are quarter m away, and you can obviously have matching reticles. Now this is the APR 2D reticle, which is what I would call a full Christmas tree reticle. I do like it because it's more radiant, but I think in my personal preference will be the APR 1, which is a little bit cleaner, a little bit clearer, and it doesn't have the full lower sections of the Christmas tree, so to speak. But you'll see that in the photos I'll put on screen. Left side is parallax control, which I said is 10 meters to infinity. It's very smooth. There's no feeling or perception of any movement from the internal lens packages and there's no backlash on it either. The very left side has illumination control as well. And there's a long press on the actual button for about three seconds, gives you full illumination of the reticle. There's no sparkle and there are 10 intensity settings which you can scroll through just by pressing the button there. It's quick to use and very easy, but it doesn't have an automated off, so make sure you switch it off. If you take the outer cap off, it takes a standard CR2032 battery, which is pretty common to most reticle illumination systems. On the right hand side, we've got windage control and we can take the cap off like that and you've got a dial underneath. Now, Element Optics do like to provide actual covers for these. So you can open the accessory pack that comes with the scope and in here, you've got a little cover, which if you take it out of the bag, will actually screw over there and protect those threads. So if you prefer not to use the scope with the cap on, you can have an external windage turret just like that. That would be generally my preference and it doesn't affect the warranty and the sealing of the scope. Other items in the accessory pack include a cleaning cloth and there's also a 35 millimeter aperture, which I'll tell you more about in a minute. There's an Allen key and there's also a spare screw, which is left here because I've already put the throw lever in. There's a screw normally in here, take that out with the Allen key, Put the throw lever in and that makes it very fast and easy to adjust. Although the actual dial itself is heavily serrated and it's easy to grip and smooth in movement. Again, there's no perception of any internal movement, no noise, no grittiness, nothing at all. It's a very well made element scope. 
The back end's got a fast focus eyepiece to make sure the reticle is in crisp focus for your eyesight. There's also a rubber rim at the back just to make sure if you do bump into it, it's not going to cut you. Interestingly, this is a totally parallel tube at the back here, so if you do want to put any additional equipment on it, like night vision units or um, a trigger cam like I've used in some of the video here, that will fit on easily and you've got no issues with it affecting the fast focus eyepiece. Overall finish on the scope is a black hard anodizing. It's very smooth, it doesn't pick up too much dust from your skin. And those turrets at 39 millimeters in diameter are easy to get hold of. And they've got really nice tactile clicks. So you can feel them, you can hear them slightly, and you can also see the clearly laser engraved markings. When you're at zero, it has got a zero stop on it. If you want to change where your dial is actually situated, once you've zeroed the rifle, you just take the cap off, lift it off, and pop that back down with the indication of zero marked to represent your zero at, say, 100 meters. When you rotate the turret on top, there are five clicks down below the zero stop, just in case you need to make any changes for other ammunition types. But when you dial upwards, anti-clockwise is a rotation indicator, which on the back here shows whether you're in the first or second rotation. Taking that cap off allows you to reset the zero stop if you need to do once you've actually zeroed your rifle, and the instruction book is very comprehensive and tells you how to do it. Zero stops essentially mean that it doesn't matter how much you dial up or down when you're changing distances, changing ranges, either experimenting with different ballistics or actually in a competition situation, you can't get lost in your rotation. If all else fails, just turn all the way back to the physical zero stop, one, two, three, four, five clicks up, and you're back on your 100 meter zero. As well as the accessories you've already seen, you do get a comprehensive reticle guide. Now this is the APR 2D, which is the full Christmas tree, and I'll show you a picture on screen of the APR 1, which has got a little bit less complexity, a little bit more free spaces, but it's really handy if you need to be able to spot bullet impact in bad surfaces like sand or gravel or even grass. So different reticles will appeal to different people. The instruction book is comprehensive and it gives you full details about how to set the scope up and use it. It also has full details of different reticle types and also the platinum lifetime warranty that Element Optics offer. I do like a good instruction book because I think it makes things a lot easier. Even for someone like me who uses a lot of scopes, but someone who's new to scopes, this gives full explanation of how to set the scope up, which is particularly important with things like zero stops and external turrets with markings on them. There's also an 80mm sunshade if you want to use that. And the aperture ring is something that Element actually explain in detail in this book because what they're saying is that a 56 millimeter front end you know lets more light in a 50 millimeter front end lets a lot of light in especially more than a 40 for example but what they're saying is if you actually restrict the amount of light going to the externals of those lenses you can actually get a better quality of image with high definition in the center and if you're not particularly struggling for low light performance this gives you better daylight usage and it will also optically give you a slightly deeper depth of field but that's not to say that adjusting focus with parallax hasn't been easy and you can get a nice sharp lock on the distance when you're setting up the scope to eliminate any reticle shift and parallax error.
Although this scopes on a rifle which is perhaps more of a target rifle than a hunting rifle, I did actually take it out rabbiting in low light at dusk. And I was quite impressed actually by how good this element optic scope was. Although you might think a 50mm front end is big enough for any scope to be good in low light, that's not so much the case when you've got a more complicated technical specification with a large zoom ratio like this scope's got. But I have to say, in its favour, I thought the element was actually very, very good. And I did particularly like the fact that when you do illuminate the reticle, even though it's quite a large reticle, there's no glare coming back off it, it doesn't sparkle out and with the 10 intensity settings you can adjust it to be exactly as bright as you need it to be. The Nexus also comes with a stretch over neoprene cover which is really handy because a lot of the time when you put your rifle in a the cabinet these big turrets on the sides of scopes can damage the stocks on other rifles so having that to protect the turrets and protect the other rifles from those turrets is particularly useful, it's not just about the glass that's being protect protected. If we look at the back of the instruction book now you can see some of the specifications. It's a 4 to 25 times magnification scope, 30mm main tube, 50mm objective lens. The exit pupil goes from 7.1 to 2mm from low to high magnification and eye relief is 77 to 92 millimeters. I was a little bit surprised that it said there's that much movement in it because to be honest when I was using the scope I found the actual exit pupil and the eye box particularly very accessible and through recoil, although there wasn't particularly much recoil on this rifle but especially in different shooting positions, I didn't find it hard to access the perfect circular vignette free full field of view. Field of view at 100 meters goes from 9.7 meters wide to 1.6 meters wide through the zoom ratio. If you want that in Imperial, it's here at 100 yards, we've got 29.2 to 4.7 feet. Click value is quarter MOA or 10th milliradian per click. Overall elevation range is 100 minutes of angle or 29 milliradians. Windage is 40 minutes of angle or 11.6 milliradians. Minimum parallax distance has been covered at 10 meters, which makes the scope accessible for air rifle use as well as rim fires and center fires, and there's no issue with recoil causing any problems on a warranted scope. Overall length is 350 millimeters and overall weight is 870 grams. So although it's quite a large and heavy scope, I think given the actual specification it offers, I think that's a fair compromise it's offered with a decent image quality available. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching some of the video filmed with the trigger cam through this scope in use and some of the details about the scope on a rifle. Please like, subscribe, comment, click the notification bell and make sure you keep track of the weekly uploads. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.